Duke. If Zion is going to play in the in the conference tournament and the big dance, then does Duke still really get a two seed, even though they've lost a couple games here? Is Zion beat because of Zion? Or if Zion says he's not going to play the rest of the year, does Duke get then get a lower seed because they're not as good without him? I would say lower seed, right? Um, yeah, I mean that's that was kind of the debate. I I think it's tough. Uh, you know, to if they keep losing, if they keep losing, I mean, they're not as good of a team, obviously, without Zion Williamson. Still, really good. He's they're still really good because I mean, they're lost. They're lost. RJ Barrett. I mean, they lost to North Carolina. And who's the other loss? Uh, Virginia? Virginia Tech. V Tech's really good too. And I think Virginia Tech. I think it was at, it was on the road. Yeah, yeah. So Duke's still a really good team. So I mean, they're they're still really good. Uh, you know, and and I still think they're one of. You know the top eight teams in the country. Yeah, you still wouldn't want to play them. No, in the tourney with Coach K. No. I'm ready. Um, so your ones probably North Carolina, Virginia. I, I need to look at more, but Kentucky's getting up there. Yeah, Kentucky's um, there. Tennessee. So two SEC, two ACC. I mean, I think Tennessee. Well, they just got beat by Kentucky last week, but Tennessee was the number one team there for a while. Yeah, they were um, for a couple weeks. Uh, I can't remember who else is up yeah, there. Yeah, I got to – let me look it up You're going to pull fast. up the top 25? Well, I'll just do projected number one seeds real fast. And okay. then we'll see if we agree. Uh, bracketology. Okay, so project – okay. Yeah, so Duke, this is a, as of February 26th, so yesterday. Duke's still projected to be number one seed uh, in the east, Midwest, Kentucky, South, Virginia – West, load up, Gonzaga. Oh yeah, Gonzaga. Okay. So not North Carolina, Duke. Projected. Mm. That's a, as, as of yesterday. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Well, is North Carolina maybe North Carolina's lost some bad games or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um. I mean, I did. Yeah, because North Carolina's a two in um, Gonzaga's bracket. Which, okay. I mean, that's a really good team. Yeah. Still. Yeah. UNC will probably come out of that. So. Yeah. Anyways. Um, it's one of the best times of the year. It is. So I'm pumped. I need to start watching more college, more college basketball, not just Big 12 stuff, uh, to really get an idea about how I'm going to do my bracket this year. So yeah. I'm sure we'll do a whole show that's based on that. Yeah, I love uh, watching the conference tournaments th- that weekend, uh, just as many of those games that are on, and watching these teams play that I don't, I don't typically watch. Right. And just kind of seeing how they play and getting an idea, you know, going into the tournament. Yeah, it's pretty cool. A lot of those conference tournaments are really fun to watch. So it's uh, it's 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 a really really good time of year for sports. So it is, it is. So uh, we'll kind of that'll wrap up college basketball this week. Uh, you know, obviously we focus a lot on the Big Twelve because we're right in the middle of it in Big Twelve country. But uh, if you guys want to hear about other conferences, like we say every week, just tweet us, uh, hit us up on Facebook, Snapchat. Whatever it is, uh, under Midwest Mics, and let us know, hey, talk more about the ACC, and, and we'll do it. We'll do the research and be ready to go come showtime. But a uh, we'll, couple of big things. We don't talk a lot of NBA on the show. Um, you know, neither of us follow it really closely. But a uh, couple of impressive things that, that have been happening. Uh, James Harden scored 30 points or more in 32 straight games. Uh, that streak ended the other night um, when he scored 28 points. It's the second longest streak ever in the NBA uh, behind Will Chamberlain at 65. So, I mean, that's that's really impressive to score 30 or more points. I think he had four games in that stretch over 50. Yeah. And, you know, to, to score 30 or more, 32 straight games is super impressive to me. Uh, yes, it is. And he's one of them. Probably one of the most prolific scores you've ever seen. Um, uh, who was it that held the record? Was it who was it? Was Will it Will? So Will 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 was probably you know, the most explosive score there was. I don't know his level of competition was as high as it is right now, considering. I mean, it's, and that's not his fault or anything like that. Yeah. It's considering that AAU ball and all year round ball happens. So these guys, by the time they get to the NBA, these guys are like machines, right? Mm-hmm. And so hard to do this is super impressive. Uh, Rockets are a really, really good team, uh, looking to do a lot of damage in the playoffs, especially if Chris Paul stays healthy. Um, Chris Harden's also—he's just one of the most 
uh, is one of the most fun guys to watch in the league just because of the ways he can score. Him and Russell Westbrook, those guys can kind of score from anywhere, and, uh, and they make basketball really fun. Uh, Hard, I wouldn't say Harden plays a lot of defense. Yeah. But he definitely scores. And they and the team win. The Rockets win. Um, so, yeah, awesome record. I mean, last year they took the Warriors to seven games in the conference finals. They go all the way to seven? They went all the way to seven. And uh, I think I think that's when Chris Paul got hurt. I thought, see, I thought Paul got hurt. I think he got hurt in, like, game five or six. Yeah, and then they, and yeah. And it went to seven games, and they didn't have it. I think Paul, I think actually with Chris Paul last year, they would have beat the Warriors. Yeah. They are kind of built to beat him. Uh, so, um, but yeah, yeah that's, that's really cool accomplishment. Uh, what's the other thing, NBA? Uh, the other thing, uh, LeBron is now 10th all-time in assists. Um, he is the only point guard uh, to be in the, or, or the only non, non-point guard, non-point excuse guard. me, non-point guard in the top 10. Um, in assists, and he's also the only player in the top ten in assists and scoring. So, LeBron James, I mean, still doing his thing out in L.A. L.A. is not very good. They're not very good. Super young team. Uh, just some of the comments he's made, it feels like he's he – feel, I think he feels like the team kind of lacks focus a little bit. Um, but we're talking about the, 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 the record and the stuff he's doing. Uh, super impressive – um, I imagine he'll keep climbing those lists since uh, one of his main goals is to end up playing with uh, Bronny Jr. Yep. Or Bronny. So whenever Bronny gets to the league, LeBron said he wants to play with them. And I think Bron has enough pull so that he'll figure out a way to do that. Um, so Bron probably played another five years at least, so he'll climb up these lists. Um, for me, he's my favorite player. Um, he's, he's my favorite player I've ever watched uh, just because he has a complete game. Um, and I'm not hating on anybody else or whatever, uh, but he's my favorite, and so it, it, I enjoy watching him get these get these numbers, get these stats, and the way he plays the game uh, is really cool. So I'm looking forward to seeing with another if he can get another superstar to the Lakers, how far he could take that team. Because the Warriors, to me, the Warriors dynasty um, this year, I think they're going to win the championship. But I think they're just about done because all those guys are about to get Clay Thompson's about to get paid. I think Draymond's going to want to get paid too. Uh, so the way Durant. it's going, uh, Durant will probably end up leaving. He's taking Durant's taking pay cuts for two years now to play with these guys. Uh, he'll probably get it'll be what it be his third, yeah, it'll be his third ring. Yeah. Um, so he'll get three, and then he'll probably want to move on and try to do something else. For Durant, if there's Durant fans out there, uh, big spot, you might as well. It's either – it might be Lakers with Braun because him and Braun are pretty tight, or it'll be uh, New York. And he might go there with Kyrie because that's kind of the rumor right there because New York cleared a bunch of cap space uh, to land somebody, and they, they got their eye on Durant. And if – And the Knicks are in the running for the Zion Williams. Zion Williamson. Dude, so here's the thing about the NBA and the thing about, about um, franchises, right? Basketball – and we've talked about this before, and we're still talking NBA, but this goes to other sports too. College football, uh, NFL, they are always better when these high-dollar, big-city franchises are are the best. Yes. And a lot of people can say they, they really like – I do like to see small market wins because I'm, I'm technically small market. I enjoy that, right? But as a whole, popularity goes up when the Lakers win. When the Knicks are good, whenever the heck that is, there's their net. They haven't been so they they haven't been good in a long time. They're still the highest valued franchise in the NBA, and they have a terrible owner, and they suck. So think about what happens if they end up getting Durant, they end up getting Zion, and maybe even get Kyrie, and they can get to the finals because they with that team they probably will. Yeah, and they win. That's gonna be crazy. So I would say Durant fans. I know you're Golden State fans right now. If you if you really just follow Durant or whatever, look at go ahead and look at some Knicks gear because I, I it's either Knicks or Lakers for me. I think for him. So yeah, uh, we'll see. And I mean that's the crazy thing. If if him and Kyrie both went to New York and they drafted Zion, I mean they're an immediate legit contender in the East to win the whole to win the East to come out of it. Right. For because sure. I mean, right now there's not since LeBron went to the Lakers, there's not a dominant team in the East. I mean, so the really, Raptors are pretty good, uh, but they're not dominant. Milwaukee, I would say Milwaukee. The, I would say Milwaukee with the uh, with the uh, 
the Greek call him, freak. Greek freak. Call him Alphabet. He is – and watching him, if you ever get a shot, pick up some NBA, and then uh, if a Bucks game's on, watch this dude. He is – he's long, he's tall, and he's, he's a baller. I mean, big time. The reason Milwaukee is where they are is because of him, and they put a nice – Cast around him, but uh, uh, the NBA is like it's it's really it, the NBA really like baseball is a total marathon. The NBA feels a lot like a marathon instead of a sprint. It becomes a marathon towards the end, trying to reach the playoffs for the, like the lower seeds. But then when you get to the NBA, I like I love the NBA playoffs. To me, the NBA playoffs are very fun because all of a sudden, I mean, I don't want to say you made players don't play defense, but they kind of slack during the regular season. When playoff time comes, these guys get a little more physical, and that's really fun to watch. So. Uh, keep an eye on that. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I don't watch very many games throughout the regular season, but usually come playoff time, and especially once you get to the conference finals, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all in and dialed in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so let's kind of transition to some football talk. Uh, you just pulled it up there, uh, some kind of some breaking news that came out late this afternoon about Johnny Manziel getting – Banned from the CFL. So released from Montreal, banned from the CFL. Uh, they still have his – so he can't play in the CFL for – or I can't – I don't know. They had him under like a two-year contract. Anyways, I'm um, kind of going through the article. I just saw it. So why did he – do you know why he I, got – I didn't see the reason, no, because I've been – I didn't have a chance to read it. kind of broke right, right as I was going to work. So, but um, – it is breaking news. We'll bring you more details as we get them. But, yeah, Johnny Manziel, really no shock that, uh, again, he screwed things up for himself. Um, it really sucks. But the uh, uh, this guy is saying uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a rumor that he might have violated it on purpose so he could get out of his CFL contract and jump into AAF. Ah. Or the XFL, which actually, if I was the AAF or the XFL, I would already call them. I would yeah. call. I would probably would have as soon as I saw this story. If I was one of those teams, you got Coach Spurrier. Hey there, Johnny. Come. I don't. I don't want him to come to Orlando. Come on, man. play old football, Coach. But you, uh, want, you want Tebow on your Orlando? I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know what he did with him because your, your quarterback's light lights yeah. out. But Gilbert damn. lights out. Anyway, Garrett Gilbert. But anyway, yeah. So you think, Johnny, if you were an AAF team? And I'd give Manziel a chance. And your, and your quarterback's not amazing or whatever. Uh, even if your quarterback is pretty good, throw him on the depth. Yeah. Why not, right? I'd sign him to, you know, a minimum deal and say, you know, hey, you're on thin ice here, buddy. One mistake, we're going to cut you. But, you that's, know, that's where but it's you cut, got a chance. And that's where it's cut off because I don't think anybody in the NFL should give him a chance. Oh, no way. No way. If he goes to the AAF or he goes to the XFL and he stays clean and he plays well, Sure, maybe he could end up uh, trying out for a team, going to camp, and then yeah. if he doesn't make it, head back down to the AAF, which is hopefully this is what actually ends up happening yeah. with these two leagues. So anyways, Manziel, AAF or XFL, call this dude right now. Get him going because he still is fun to watch. Yeah. He can and, run around. And you're going to get some fans. Yeah, he's entertaining. You know, some people are going to be fans of Johnny Manziel. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's not a bad business move. For any of these teams, you know, in the AAF, especially if you're one that's struggling and, you know, people don't want to watch, you know, teams that are bad typically. So if you're one of the, one of the lower teams in the AAF, why not bring this guy in and maybe generate some excitement around your franchise? Like, hey, we're bringing in former NFL quarterback Johnny Manziel. Yeah, and I always kind of thought that Get some fans uh, out. This kind of reminded me of, uh, well, what you just said reminded me of about three years ago, maybe two or three years ago. When I was like, man, the Jaguars sucked, right? Yeah. I'm like, they should bring in Tebow. He's a Florida dude. Yep. Bring him in. You don't have to pay him a lot, and you'll probably win more games. Yeah. Instead, they roll with Bortles, and it's up and then down. Yep. So, Way bad. Tebow, so. You would have won a Super Bowl with Tebow. No, I don't know about <laughs> that. I don't know about yeah. that. But. Hey, so anyway, we'll get we'll jump right into the AAF. That was kind of just kind of, like I said, breaking news. But anyway, so AAF in the East Division – We've got the two best teams, the Orlando Apollos at 3-0, and the Birmingham Iron are also 3-0. So they're tied atop the East. Orlando is at Salt Lake this weekend coming up, and Salt Lake is 1-2. And And then the Birmingham Iron, they play San Antonio at home. 
uh, in.